Yo gang, what up? I'm back. Okay, I'm sorry. I've been in a car accident if you didn't know about it. Um, I've been pretty much on the mend. I'm probably going to record this in parts because I really can't sit in this chair too long. Thank you for the love and support to everybody who said very nice things to me. I really appreciate it. You know, we're a small community and I really, you know, feel the love from you guys. Now, without further ado, I want my flowers. Okay, I want my flowers. I called this manipulation of memories and emotions okay rewind seven months ago i had particularly focused on the manipulation of memories and the manipulations of emotions okay the memory thing came to be fruition okay we know that they all can remove their memories and um they can do it like however they want to do it right i was correct about that also emotions okay I said that emotions can be manipulated and that their emotions were probably removed from Zahar. Zahar manipulated his friends to remove their emotions. And it's probably the thing that got Arlen and V and even Luslek when he, you know, he, he approached Ari Han and told him, I can't believe you guys did that. That, that is what I was talking about, okay? Just real quick. The only thing that makes sense to me for them to feel this way towards them is that their feelings for these people have been removed that's it that's all i got i don't see in there any other way to interpret this to put it in very simple terms especially with what trom and gustang says towards the end of it is that he needed his great warriors zahar needed his great family leaders all become joffrey baratheons so if you watch game of thrones you know who joffrey baratheon is he's the really crazy king who didn't kill or care about regular people and was super entitled that's basically what zahar needed them all to become and that's exactly what they became and to further go on about this am Weez, when she's talking to lee rang in the room she says that she doesn't want to watch trom change because they're all changing why are they all changing because their feelings towards regular people and regular things have changed zahar needed his friends to become kings they had to remove or repress and what they're saying here repress certain emotions and actually I, if I want to admit any wrongdoing is that repressed is the correct word because we do see a little bit of anger a little bit of sadness a little bit of pity like we do see little itty bitties of bits of these emotions um you know here and there even love like trauma raised love for Anne Weez. however they have been like tremendously repressed tremendously and we got that when we saw trauma get his emotions back what did he do everything that he's ever done while a family hit has come back to him as a normal human and he offed himself i gotta say for you too we don't you know condone any of that action over here but man crashed out okay man absolutely crashed out for sure 100 percent. like you know what you did was wrong i know the feeling of probably killing and wheeze probably like did it like that probably did it on top of of course losing his immortality and everything but that did it guys like that absolutely positively did it and that's what i was telling you guys months ago when they were talking about the grace people um, you know, when Gustang, Ejuan, Trom, and who we think is Quadro were all in that room in that table talking about the Grace people, they talked about the Grace people as if they were just people that like climbed with them or just co workers. When in fact, we know that they were all friends, like they were all legitimately friends who, you know, developed relationships. Like we, we watched people climb the tower. We know how Bomb and, uh, Rack and 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 Yeon and all of those guys, how they all you know became friends and became closer because the tower does that to you. It never made sense to me that they spoke about Arlen and V as if they were people that they, they barely even knew. That never that never computed with me. And we get it here. We get we understand that you know emotions were removed. And Weez, and Weez, and Yi Rang, that conversation they had in that window room before and Weez escaped. What did Yi Rang say? And I, I've always emphasized and stood on this part of it because this is when it was told to us. She says, now that we can do these things and um, quote me if I'm, 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 I'm going to you know, paraphrase. We basically become we can become monsters like we can act in these certain ways where we don't you know, necessarily have to care anymore. And that's what I'm talking about. Something happened for them to get there. And it only could have been removing emotions. 
and it had to be linked to becoming a king. There had to be a trade-off. There had to be something that Zahar, Zahar absolutely needed them to become that for them to be kings. Otherwise, they would try to save everybody. They would love everybody. They, they wouldn't be who they are today. And that's all a part of Zahar's master manipulation. So I need my flowers on that, okay? I need all my love. Anybody, you know, a lot of people have fought me on those theories for months and months on end. And I need my flowers, okay? All right, so before we get into this recent, you know, chapter of this past Sunday, I do have to talk about last week's because I did get into the accident. I didn't have a review. So let's go over that before we get into this one, right? And I'll put, uh, you know, um, chapters below if you want to skip last week's chapter, feel free. But I'm going to talk. This is one of those uh, reviews. I know a lot of you guys love these reviews where i am been writing a script. I'm just going to talk, okay? So in 649, um, I am going to breeze through it pretty fast. Uh, we know that V escaped and Traumary survived. And I was quite upset about this because Gus Dang saved Traumary. And it doesn't really make sense. Now, of course, it does a little bit now that we got 650. But I actually said this, and if you were in the Discord, or if you weren't in Naya's stream this past week, um, I'll link Naya's stream up here if you want to you know, go check that out. But I did say in Naya's stream, basically my thoughts about the chapter is that this 649 is only going to matter if 650 makes sense. If we get something that happens, like a um, a result of everything, which was Traumary's death that we know in 650. But initially, um, I was very upset about this because it just didn't make sense for Gustang to save him. I mean, we knew that Gustang was kind of going to because in 648, he kind of hinted towards him being the one to punish Traumary, him being the one that wanted to kill Traumary. Like he wanted to be that guy, but he ends up saving him. Um, and then Urek, you know, is a little upset. Urek is just, I'll say it right now, Urek's a failure. Failed to stop V, which wasn't even his goal, but he didn't do anything to him. He didn't get the revolutionaries. All he did was really make the family head stop fighting, and ultimately we know what happened. But, like, Urek's a failure. Um, I'm not very high on Urek right now. Um, I know, uh, he kind of seemed very divisive in this season. Um, while we did learn some cool things about him, like his, you know, his deletion fists that are just as destructive as Blossom Slames, it's cool, but as far as his utility here, bro didn't really accomplish much of anything, right? So, we know that Gus Dang said, you know, you go away, we're gonna go play chess now, um, and then Bellier and Kuhn are all reacting to seeing Bomb leave, and we know that Bellier tried to steal the piece from Kuhn, but they ended up getting away, and we get that exchange with Gustang and Bellier, where Gustang and Bellier are basically staring at each other down. Bellier is cussing Gustang out because he's upset that he's gonna let Kuhn win the game, which is absolutely hilarious. Like, you know, throwing an absolute tantrum. Um, and it really does seem so crazy right now that the revolutionaries left their fate in the hands of of, of, of Bellier. Like, now granted, Gustang did like help take care of Tron, which we know in 650, but and that's one family head down, but Gustang's still here. So the, the ultimate goal is for both of them to fall. So Bellier did fail, um, and he's quite upset. Now, this chapter did set up 650 perfectly um, with, you know, Traumary sitting in the chair and waking up to find, like, he's okay. Um, Gustang basically took care of him, and they're going to play chess. And a lot of people were big a lot of people were big on the symbolism of Traumary only having one piece because he's basically the only one left in his family, even though we know there are still local PF people around. But in terms of what the war turned out, Traumary is the only one left. Um he basically got everybody smoked, didn't really care. Um that's just how it played out. And, you know, he's telling like us saying like wait, like why are we here? But you know, you put me in a scenario where I'm basically gonna lose anyway. Um, and Gustang's like, well, yeah, um, Traumary, like, this is how it turned out, and, you know, I'm gonna be the one to finish you, basically. So, that's basically 649. Um, it wasn't a great chapter. Uh, if I had to rate it, it'd probably be, like, a 6. Um, art was cool. Um, like I said, it was heavily dependent on 650, the result. Um, but as far as everything that happened, that's what I gave it at the time. I would raise it now that we know what 650 happened. I would probably give it, like, a 6.5. I'll raise it, like, point and a half. I wouldn't give it a 7. But um, 650, we can move on to um, the craziness of 650, where there are a lot of facts and a lot of stuff we got to talk about, right? Um, Traumary and Gustang, they're having their, their normal. This is how they've kind of talked to each other since we've seen them kind of meet, right? I talk about old times on how they used to do things and how chess used to be played with them when they were younger. Um, Traumary goes to say that he's always been alone. Gustang, finally, 
finally, finally, Gus Dang questions this. This is what I've kind of needed this, this entire like season. Chamari, who keeps saying that he's alone, has never been alone. Like nobody, it's like people, like even in the community, people don't say this out loud. Chamari has never been alone. He's always had people. He has family and he has kids. He has, he had a wife, he had loyal people. It's, it just never was, was being said. And I, I said this before and I'll say it again. What Traumery was trying to achieve was impossible. I've been told I was wrong about this, but what he was trying to achieve was impossible and he already had it. You can't, there is no perfection. There will never be perfection. There will never be a place where there's uh, no, non-discrimination. That, that doesn't exist in almost any story, in any place. Like, it's an ideal, it's an ideal thought. It's a, you know, it's idealism. Like, that's what Traumery's acting off of, of like what he thinks things can be like. But it's it's almost impossible to perfect a, perfect a system like that. And it's not going to bring him what he wants. That's what it ultimately matters. We even go to Kieran and Robodon, who were his first children. Now, for those who assume, because there were people who were, who used to say that there was a first generation of uh, Lobopia family members that were like before Robodon's time, um, they, they don't exist. Um, we don't get those people. Uh, his first children who we get in this chapter are Robodon and Kieran. So I don't know where people were coming up with those theories. Like, have people been born over time? Yes, but apparently Kieran and Robodon are his oldest and eldest children. So that begs the question, who is the eighth son that possibly got killed and that Traumary was a little bit upset about? Um, like, is that retcon now? Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. Y'all remember that whole thing, right? And I wonder if that's true, right? Um, because, you know, we come to understand towards the end of this chapter that Traumary's feelings were removed. Before I get into this, you want to know the crazy thing about this? Traumary might have been happy if he had his feelings. Do you, like, do, do we realize that? If Traumary didn't have this king contract restricting everything, having his family, which came after, after he became a king, having his family, having a, a woman that wants to marry him, having a loyal person like Enkidu, Traumary might have been good. He might have been fine. He might have been able to feel things more. He might have been able to realize. But when, when you know, if you've ever been in an environment where you have to repress your feelings, like at work, then you know how restricted you are and how analytical your brain becomes when it comes to making decisions. Like, if there's a bit of emotion to it, there always is a bit, but you know that you have to make statistical decisions more than anything at work because emotions are, is not a place when you, uh, is not emotions is not something that can be used in a place where there's business being conducted or we're trying to reach a certain objective. And, you know, we see that he has, you know, he's afraid of being left like, but, but nobody was leaving him. Like, this is the craziest part of this. Mans is afraid of people leaving him. Nobody was leaving him. Like, we know the structure of the tower. We know how things work. Where are they going to go? They're going to be a part of the Lobo Pia family no matter what. So I, it's, it's hard for me to comprehend a little bit of this because the tower is a huge place. But, like, of course, there's there's always going to be a point where, like, they're not going to be around you all day. But, like, we see Robodon and how he treats Traumary. Like, he worships his father. Like, 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 like more than anybody. And... Like, you know, we know Kieran betrayed him, uh, but that's only because of what, what he is, only because what Traumary has become. Very intriguing to hear Traum talk about um, Wang Wang and Nenea. Um, he obviously had a real liking for, for Wang Wang. And we know how loyal Wang Wang was. We know how he was never going anywhere. And this was actually the goal of Traumary's experiments. And he achieved it. He had somebody that he could ultimately control and who was ultimately loyal to him, where he didn't really have to control him. He was just going to be there. But what did he do? His anxiety got to him. His anxiety. So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about feelings being repressed. Um, like... It's interesting that like most of his feelings were were repressed, but the strongest one that seems to have gotten through, and I guess that's going to be based on the character. So it's very intriguing to me that like we'll probably get to learn about the family heads later on, and a lot of them will probably have a more domineering emotion than the other. Um, like for instance, Traumary's 
you know anxiety isn't really like a feeling feeling but it's it is a feeling you get when you get nervous or you get a little bit scared it's kind of a mixture of both right trauma is anxiety which i didn't never think i would even hear a word like that from a family head you know who's supposed to be emotionless it's the strongest kind of emotion that we can assume that got to him and he couldn't deal with it so to deal with it he just eliminated the things that he was scared of losing that is um not something i can relate to but you you but there are examples of that in real life right like we they, they call that um um when you push people away like when you you know you when you love somebody so much and you care about people so much that you know you get scared of losing them so you push them away sometimes um that's a real life thing um now the that's the only version i can relate to in real life but and i kind of put this out there before when you know when we finally got what traumary's dream was that traumary wanted to be kind of like a god it sounds really really controlling when you put it that way like trauma sounds like he wants to be a god though he describes it as he wants to be free in a way like I, I said this several times, I can link the chapter if you want, but Traumary's ideal of what he wanted to become basically puts him in a God position. He wanted to play God. Whether he knew it or not consciously, that's ultimately what, you, what we're doing. You want to control the only race that, it, that will exist in a tower and you want them to basically like kind of, you know, never be divided, never like be angry or anything, that's controlling. Like this, you know, you're already a, a kind of a dictator, you know, all of the family heads are basically dictators, but you wanted to control everything. You know, you wanted to be a god. And he even admits it here, like maybe through his shin war with you, that's what he wanted to be. I'm glad that he admits it because, <laughs> yo, I'm sorry, I, I've been calling Traumary's character pretty damn well for a while now, so it's, it's glad to see that these things are coming to light, right? Completely, absolutely, completely agree with Gustang. Traumary's just an idiot. Like, if there's anybody who doesn't understand emotional intelligence, who doesn't have emotional intelligence, who doesn't understand anything, and, and of course we understand it's from Traumary's nature of where, where, he, where he started from to who he became. Um, that he doesn't understand people, he doesn't understand emotions, he doesn't understand these things. And he's, it makes him an idiot because he's doing everything to try to understand it, but in the most unnatural way. And it's not necessarily his fault because of having his emotions removed that it, it takes you further, further, like probably completing an impossible goal, which I wonder if Zahar even knew this was an impossible goal, like, like low key, right? Like that's, it's, it's really screwed up if it is, right? Like you're really trying to deal with loneliness that you necessarily don't really have. And you're doing all of this. You're, you're hating your children. You're experimenting on people. You're making like sexual things happen between them, snake and all that weird shit all to achieve something that you, you kind of did and that you know it, i know it's an it's a, it's a loop you know it's a loop it's impossible but you know you guys know what i'm saying at this point right i see the community is up in arms about something that um Rachel told gustang i'm not really upset about it it's just one of those things where oh we got another secret to find out about so it's whatever guys we'll find out about it i'm not super pressed about it don't be pressed about it it's a tease you know one of those things that happen towards the end of a season you always get something like that right um but i i will say um you know the scene where the administrator comes and you know obviously takes um, trauma raised immortality a uh, beautiful scene beautiful art um and kind of fitting it was kind of i i'm not gonna lie i felt a, a sense of uh you know not feeling badness but um a little bit of like sorriness for trauma after this like he kind of looked like in such a defeated state after you know having his immortality removed um i don't feel bad for him i just feel bad for the action like the action is kind of like a you know it's kind of like you know watching the super bowl right you watch the super bowl and one of the teams has to lose and it's kind of like ugh. like you don't feel bad for the team but it's just like you understand that like you lost something right i i hate that trauma did crash out because he absolutely did but what happened what happened i already said it but what happened man took himself out because his woman is gone the thing that he cared about probably the most more than anything is his woman she died he took her away himself and had he been the person that he is now with the tears in his eyes as, he's, as he does it he probably would have done it it never would have happened half the things that have happened never would have happened and he probably sees it all it's kind of like your life flashing before you like that's probably what it felt like getting one of your emotions back like that so um yeah trauma Marie crashes out we get a scene where you know um and talks about you know taking over his heart 
and you know that you see a little bit of that same anxiety that he spoke about you know in that scene where he's just scared he's so scared of losing it but yeah that's that's pretty much it you know gustang um does shut his eyes so we do know that you know gustang does now control the global pf family um lobodon should fall under gustang's wing as far as any other of the uh, global pf forces that's still available um i wonder how that works right i wonder how the power structure changes like in the tower like we did lose a lot of global pf people but whoever's still around like spider mommy or whoever um they should be trauma i mean uh, they should be gustang's so gustang's army does like you know he did lose a lot of pieces but you know he also gained some so now as far as you know this is kind of like a trauma send off officially this time right um trauma was a good and well-written character i absolutely commit admit that um i i will say a lot of it does come from the removal of emotions aspect but when you have like such a domineering effect like that that affects like multiple people because obviously all the family heads will be affected you get to craft each character around that one dominating aspect so trauma is interesting because you know we get to learn that anxiety is like an emotion that didn't necessarily leave him but he always had which means to me that it was his strongest emotion um how that has affected him throughout the story has been ultimately negative like if i had to say like of his actions like trauma is a piece of shit I, like this doesn't change anything like i'm not gonna say rest in peace trauma because he was a manipulating murderous like dictator like he was he was all of those things but the complexities of his character are well thought out and a lot of it does make sense now i will say i would have wanted to know why he was that way which means that that would travel a little bit outside the tower or beginning of the tower like why is traumary like this guy who's kind of like a, a closeted person um but it uh, it does really speak to people who are like that who are kind of closeted and it's basically telling you like to you know don't repress your emotions in a way and we'll probably get that from all of the family heads but in trauma way this is a what can happen if it does go that way and you rely on like the negative feelings to kind of feed your thought process so the the anxiety the sadness the depression um when you distance yourself from people you lose take like touch of rea your your relax re reality and your reality you don't get to really see how blessed you are um a lot of us take you know life for granted and things that we have for granted and trauma is a good reminder of that if you look at his totality of season three so um overall he's a good written character but i don't like i he's not a good moral character okay he's not somebody to, obviously he's not somebody to be a like um to be like but i will say he is a good written character i just don't think anybody should say rest in peace man does not deserve peace okay the shit he did was not okay so but yeah that's in the local pia trauma right um yeah see you really cooked i i can't lie so um yeah guys um where do we go from here i have absolutely no idea um it'd be nice to see gustin kind of put his arm back and put the nice clothes back on um but uh we probably see a little at interaction with him and coon um i will say i am sad that we didn't get rachel and arc young um reactions to v that's one thing i was really really looking forward to um but maybe that'll come back around at some point right maybe we'll we'll see it um hopefully it does come um but you know i would love to see the reaction of zahard you know because i had imagined when uh this this has i, I wonder if there's like a, a thing that kind of links them all the family heads together right like if one of them dies it's kind of like a notch like on the belt or something that they can feel right um i imagine we might get a little bit of something like that like we might get an overall reaction um in this next chapter we may not we may get a pov change and get to see you know the the remnants of the war and everybody cleaning up yama and everybody to see um maybe funerals for like doom and, and dawin if they're actually dead um maybe things of, of that nature because it's, it is time to calm down like all the hype stuff is gone and, you know it's basically reaction time it's calming down time it's um redeveloping the story and trying to get people to you know understand what direction we're going into so um yeah but overall um this chapter is a eight out of ten um really really good like i said it, the result mattered um the dialogue mattered um there are like i said one of more trauma reads pass pass but overall um good character um art was clean i i love the administrator stuff um urek meh as fuck 
but yeah um as far as the story goes really good stuff really good stuff so um thank you guys for your support i appreciate it um i did say that the red dump video would be coming out um you know it would have came out this past weekend if i didn't get hurt but um it's gonna be a little bit of delay on that so maybe give me two to three weeks i am still healing i'm sorry you know even if two to three weeks don't come um, i'm sorry guys my, my back is a little bit screwy so um yeah but thank you guys for your love and support please share the video share it on x share it whatever you want tower of god um discord below below join join Holmes tower we in there chatting peace guys